the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen Variety Show. Claire Saffitz. Sola L. Whaley. Brad Leone. Gabby Melian. Alex Delaney. Emil Stanek. Christina Che. Chris Morocco. Carla Lolly Music. Priya Krishna. Molly Baz. Rick Martinez. Andy Barragani. And featuring Adam Rappaport. Benefiting World Central Kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen Variety Show. I'm Adam Rapport, <laughs> editor in chief, and we are live from all over North America. We're is that Sola L. Whaley down there on the East Village, right, Sola? We got Christina hey. Che. You're in Brooklyn, somewhere in Brooklyn, and Alex Delaney outside Philly, where Alex Delaney always is. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We got games, we got guests. We're going to be taking your questions on the internet, and I repeat that we're live. So if anyone like freezes it's because we're only kind of know what we're doing so uh first and foremost we are here tonight uh to raise funds for world central kitchen uh the amazing relief organization founded by chef humanitarian and nobel prize nominee jose andres uh and none of this i mean literally would be possible if not for our sponsors so massive thanks to bush's beans for getting behind us supporting us in our efforts to help the world central kitchen and to Dawn Power Wash for helping us help Jose in what all the amazing things that he does. Now, I can't help but notice that it's like 7.06 p.m. on Friday night, and none of us have drinks in our hands. So that means it's time for Alex Delaney's Cocktail Minute. Well, well, well. Welcome to uh, the world's most exclusive bar. It is a cutting board <laughs> on top of a Dutch oven on my parents' that, counter. So pretty bespoke. Uh, you're, you should be honored to be here. Um, <laughs> we've, got, we've got Brad Leone joining us. We've got Molly Boz joining us. We've got Carla Lally Music joining us. What's up, guys? Okay, yeah. Carla. Everybody's doing all right? Great. More than all right. Yeah, it's doing great. Drinking a little Lambrusco and, uh, you know. Yeah, what are you guys drinking? Brad's got Lambrusco. Carla, what are you working on? Well, I drank all the Chinar, so this is a Capaletti oh. spritz with a lot of olives. <laughs> the appropriate amount of olives. And Molly, what do you have? I've got a Negroni over here. That's oh, um, half gone already, so that's how this mm. night's going to go. I like that. <laughs> okay, so our lovely friends in the social media department uh, gave all of the viewers um, a little look into what I am going to be making tonight. I'm making a very classic cocktail, a whiskey sour. Um, One of my that, faves. Right? It took, it's under love. love. It. It un it's under um, So I'm going to make one really quickly. It's a super easy cocktail, uh, and it falls into the sour family of cocktails, which is a really easy formula. Mm. Uh, it's two I'm ounces heard of, it. of booze. Yeah, you guys have heard of it, right? <laughs> Okay, two ounces of booze. So for this, you could use bourbon, uh, tequila, or if you wanted to, you could use rum. Um, and then three quarters of an ounce of citrus juice and three quarters of an ounce of one-to-one -one sugar to water, simple syrup. So easy, easy to memorize. Right? So let's start it up. 
Um, Sorry, that? Okay. Question uh, for Molly, though. The two cocktails that are in this family, tequila and rum, daiquiri or a margarita, which do you prefer? Oh, margarita all the way. Have you heard of Margs with Malls, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. We're making it a thing starting next week. Um, I've been drinking one to five margaritas every single night of quarantine. Oh, whoa, um, one to five. <laughs> Yeah, you know, depends on the night. Depends on the night. Strong range. I like that. Yeah, yeah. totally. Every Monday to Friday. Friday. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, all the way. Quick update here. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, two ounces of some good old American bourbon um, in my cocktail shaker, plus ice. Delaney, how is the um, uh, egg white? Egg white. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Where's your dry shake with your egg white? Well, 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 well. Um, <laughs> there are two versions of a whiskey set. Um, and the actual official Bon Appetit version does not have an egg white in it. So, uh, for the, always for worried about the egg white. Steak, we're not doing an egg white. <laughs> All right, shake her up. Also, Okay, um, I've checked in with you guys, uh, but I think we have some more guests coming in while I shake this. Let's bring them on in. It's great to see you. Tell <laughs> you later. Shake it. Oh. <laughs> shake, shake. Yeah, who's, oh, who's shaking? Oh, shake who's shaking? Who's shaking with Alex? Said they did. Hi. 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 Andy boy. Hi. Oh, we got cold boy. No. <laughs> Good to wow. see you. What's going on? on? Here, here. What, are you, what are you guys drinking? We got old Delaney whipping up a cocktail. A <laughs> yeah. Are you He's still on his egg too? whites? No, he ditched the egg no whites. Egg white. uh, yeah, an egg white. It's a thing now. Um, Andy, what do you got? What are you drinking? What are you got working on? I got a good amount of tequila with a little bit of lime juice, a splash of seltzer, and a little Where? bit of lemon juice. Oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. Where's that fits? Look at that. Look at me, guys. Claire had drink. one sip. Claire said one sip of Lele. It's low <laughs> alcohol. Lele Blanc with her power suit. My three-piece suit, you guys. Can you see the pants? <laughs> Claire is vesting right now. Oh, you know, I'm having a great I'm time. Similar. Ooh, tuxedo. it's not three-piece, but it is, you know, Canadian. What's you guys, I want to see what's I happening below. I literally <laughs> had three sips and I just tried to say Tuxedian Concedo <laughs> that Jay was wearing. <laughs> um, yes, Lille, Lille Blanc, ice, lots of lemon. <clears throat> I love it so much. It's my favorite drink. Oh, I'm also that? going low ABV. I'm doing vermouth, soda, an olive, an orange oh, twist. Yeah. So good. That's very, fun. very, you know what's up. That's very what's much up. my style, yeah. I'm at Emily Schultz, who's watching, knows what's up. What kind of red, Brad? That's what I'm at with the, with the Lambrusco. You know, a little working man's wine. Uh, you like the <laughs> bubbles. I like a, a little sparkly you red. You like the bubbles, too. yeah. You like the dancing. I do oh, yeah. like the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Andy, what do you got? Well, uh, I, I got a good... Oh, it does look very good. I have a good amount of tequila in a glass. We need to appreciate the glass here. Look at this. Oh. Beautiful. Prime, your like grandma. Gorgeous. Yours or mom and or mom and dad's? Uh, mom and dad's. Yeah. I feel like it should be it green right. or something, right? A green glass. <laughs> Look at Sola just like Sola. What you got? <laughs> just like snuck in. <laughs> Sola just, I've just got some whiskey. You know, keeping it simple. Oh, clean like a glass <laughs> teacup. Sola, room temp ever... whiskey. <laughs> always, always room temp. I don't think I've ever seen Sola turn down whiskey at any point in the test kit. Whenever I'm making a cocktail, I'm like, whiskey, and she's like, yep, give me one. Until I just disappear. <laughs> Until you, like, Homer Simpson uh, gif into the hedge. The bushes. <laughs> That's not going to happen tonight. I'm sticking around. Good. Yeah, we got a while. We got we to gotta pace yourself. Internet mm -hmm. problems, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you drinking? Uh... Andy, what do you got in that fancy glass? <laughs> <laughs> Names that you're labeled that, that I couldn't that, get. That, the whiskey has already hit you, so like I'm telling you, you, got, you gotta you gotta dilute it with a little bit of ice or something. That's okay. Claire's right there with you. 
I'm there. Vodka with a, a frozen rock of vodka. Tequila. Mm. Tequila. Classy. Yeah. Sola, <laughs> is that a Woody Woodpecker uh, poster or something behind you there? Yeah, what's going what's yep. on? Classic. I, love I like Woody to keep. Woodpecker. I like the vintage vibes, you know? Ooh, right? I it's like it. Good, yeah. Good wall. <laughs> Brad, uh, Brad is officially a fan of your interior design sense. Yeah. Hey, that's all I've ever wanted in my life. I doubt okay. That. Thank you. Guys, now that we've acknowledged Sola's wonderful interior design <laughs> sensibilities, I think we're moving on to our next segment. Yeah, let's do it, bud. Yeah, sounds right. good. Um, okay, Here. I want to thank all of you for uh, joining me in the cocktail minute. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Great. Cheers. <laughs> All right, Mixmaster, Alex Delaney, thank you very much. I'm drinking beer on ice in case anyone's wondering. It's my usual go-to drink when it like, gets above 60 degrees. Uh, all right, fundraising, check-in minute. We've been on air now for approximately 12 minutes. We have already raised, guys, $23,452 oh. for World Central Kitchen. Well, that, <laughs> the, the, the graphic, it's gotten more since we're showing that graphic, so trust us. <laughs> 23,452, it's good to be wrong. Exactly, Andy. Uh, oh, and anyway, so if you're watching us, uh, you can just go to that donate button down there and you can donate. And after this show is live, it's gonna live on and you can continue to donate. So no matter when you're watching it, live or not, donate, 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 help out Jose Andres in World Central Kitchen. Um, and guys, if we hit our feet, hit our number, if we hit our goals here, uh, apparently Chris's kids will get a second banana. Andy Baragani here, Claire, do you know he's going to do some power lunges for us? Oh, God. Ooh, cannot wait. And, <laughs> and, most importantly, and most importantly, Christina Che is going to unlock the secret to that lustrous hair of hers she's done for this Test Kitchen live video. So, but and for, I digress because next segment, I know how competitive you guys are in the Test Kitchen. So now it's time for BA Test Kitchen Speed Test. Oh man, the jackets are off. Yeah. Baragani's <laughs> showing his guns. Che was already said she was sweating. She was so excited for this. Nervous Eight or excited, on. Che? Which one is it? Def nervous. So nervous. Nervous. Right, get Damn, Claire's like, whatever. I can uh, do this in my sleep. Whatever. All right. So everyone's got their camera set up. Here is the deal. All right. Speed test. You each have one cup of whipped cream, correct? You have yeah. a bowl, you have a whisk. If you are smart, you put those bowls and whisk in the freezer already. No room, but I, no room. No room in the <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the deal. When I say go, the first person to whip the whipped cream to stiff peaks and hold the bowl over their but head. Claire's without going control. already. What? Claire, what are you doing? I put the cream in the bowl, is that not allowed? Oh my God, I no. Mean, We're All right, oh. guys, guys. Claire. Andy, you couldn't have worn pants for this? We're on live TV. <laughs> oh, it's Some a pants. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll put the you need to be mobile. Sorry, guys. You are Claire's a grown-ass man. Claire's wearing a freaking straight jacket. I need okay. to be swift. Me, what she's doing. Okay, stop. It is a Just linen stop, everyone. suit. <laughs> Here's the deal. Pour the cream into the bowl. Everyone pour your cream into the bowl. One cup. Yeah, like I did. Che, how much is that? Just one cup? 
one cup. You think I would okay. do more? I don't know. You're very strong. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> when I say go, first person to whip the cream to stiff peaks and who's able to hold the ball over their head with no cream coming on their head is the winner. The loser, because you have to do second and third place, the loser who comes in fourth place has to eat the bowl of whipped cream, okay? Oh. Here we go. No, no problem, Adam. Yeah. I'm going to do Ready. that anyway. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one, go! Okay, you got to try to keep the whipped cream in the bowl, not over your floor. Claire, I like Claire's technique. Very limber wrist, moving <laughs> quickly. Chris is like aggressive. He looks like he's in fast motion over there. Oh, my money might be on Chris. I don't know. Andy's doing some weird like CrossFit training over there in the corner, working out his like lats or something. There's so your... much cream everywhere. Oh my god! I know. I... Who's coming in second and third? Who's who is coming in second and third? Over me know. too. Come on, you gotta want it, Claire. Oh wow. I do want it. I apparently not. Apparently that not. Was, wow, you Probably dusted faster. the competition. You lapped I, them, Chris. I nailed your a special whisk. <laughs> yeah, what kind of whisk? Uh, I've got an OXO 11 inch uh, special ordered for the occasion, Adam. Oh, pro move. Is anyone still going? Yeah, yeah. everyone's still yeah. going. Andy's, Andy's looking, bowl sucks. Uh, Andy's bowl is too wide. It's not it, tall enough. The, the whisk is too big. Look at the look at the whisk in Andy's hand. It's ginormous. It's I know Andy's not a tall guy, but that whisk is pretty big. Oh, we're gonna oh need God, to really get tired. Kitchen, but it's worth it. Oh, Che. Oh, Che was almost ready. Oh, <laughs> I thought Claire was like the Claire. You are an entire cook. Oh, there you go. Oh. Che's in second place. Who's gonna come oh. in last? Hey! Come on, Claire. I'm so hard. On. You're the pastry queen. Let's do it. Oh my God. Claire, you have an entire baking book coming out in the fall. Oh, Dessert Adam. person. Yeah, but it's not a speed test. It is a speed test. Come on, here we go. Oh, I think Claire, get yeah, over your head. Over your All head. Right, Andy, you're in last place, Andy. Andy's got to eat the whole bowl of whipped cream. No, I'm yes. done. No, Claire beat you. Claire got in just no. below the wire. Yes! Oh. What? I thought I just held it. Andy. No, she held it up first. You're going to put on some serious LBs if you eat all that whipped cream, Andy. <laughs> Too much oh, man. How did this happen? Too much muscle. You guys got to see my floor. Uh, Andy, what kind of whisk were you using? Or what was that? It was too, ginormous. Too big of a whisk. Guys, it was a, a ridiculous whisk. See, half of the oh, cream no. was on Claire's floor. Yeah. I think Everyone Claire and Che, we might have to go to the videotape to see if they're disqualified for oh. displacing no, too much of the cream from the ball. No <laughs> She's way. still you whipping. Know, you Why are you still whipping, gonna... Che? Because I'm preparing dessert. Oh, yeah. What you, you you made like shortbread or something? What'd you he make? Made Biscuits? Shortcakes. shortcakes. I, made, shortcakes. Um, I made Chris's shortcakes. Okay. And they're amazing. They are uh, so good. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Congratulations, Chris, on Lap in the Field. But right now, we've got more important things to do. We've got the World Central <laughs> Kitchen to talk about. Thanks so much. Thanks, Adam. All right. Bye. Hello everyone, it's Priya. I am coming at you from my parents' backyard in hot and sunny Dallas, Texas. Mom and dad, say hi. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about the amazing charity that all of your donations are going toward. And by the way, you all have raised $52,667 so far, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so the charity we're supporting is called World Central Kitchen, one of my favorites, and it was started by truly one of the nicest and most talented chefs I know, Jose Andres. Andres started World Central Kitchen in 2010 to support relief efforts for the Haiti earthquake. Since then, he's supported countless relief efforts, and right now, 
Uh, he and World Central Kitchen are active in dozens of cities and they're distributing 200,000 fresh meals every day, which is amazing. And we're so happy to support them. Uh, so earlier this week, Adam uh, was able to sit down with Jose, chat about the amazing work we're doing. So let's check it out. Adam, you're up. Jose, in the past six weeks or so, you have done so much for so many people. Uh, World Central Kitchen activated in more than 138 cities, 29 states. But my first question is, how are you yourself doing? I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm very well supported by my family, my daughters. They are safe at home. We are very lucky. I used to try to support the team. Whatever there is hungry, I try to make sure that World Central Kitchen will be present. Well, so that's what I wonder. In, in the past, they mobilize and they're where people need them, whether it's hurricane relief, earthquake, wildfires. This crisis, I mean, it's global, it's nationwide. How do you know and how do you decide where to go? We are here to cover the blind spots because it's a lot of good things happening. Food banks, even they are overwhelmed. The school districts, even they are overwhelmed. But sometimes we support some of those areas, plus the many other parts where our forgotten neighborhoods, the feeding capacities of the system. So when you say we, are these volunteers? Are these employees of the World Central Kitchen? You need to remember that World Central Kitchen uh, only have 40, 45 people in, on, on payroll. Across America, almost every single restaurant is closed. We have armies of amazing people that bring the best empathy to put themselves at the service of fellow Americans. How does that work? Are they getting paid? Are they be given, given money? Like, what, what is that set up like? So this was very important for me. So putting restaurants to work, what I'm doing is not just us doing it. It's proving the concept to the White House, at, to Congress. Let's make sure we put restaurants up and work, pay the workers, pay the cooks, pay the farmers. It's a very smart way to do it. They stop throwing money at the problem, but use the restaurant infrastructure all across America to feed America in a moment of disrepair. As you've talked about before with World Central Kitchen, your job as the head of a restaurant or restaurants is to be organized, is to oversee a staff, is to put operations in place. It's not just to make delicious food, but it's to make the whole thing run. I was very recently uh, with Marcus Samuelson, one of my favorite guys, how he opened his restaurant in Harlem and then his uh, restaurants in uh, Newark. And he became the leader himself from the front and from the back. He decided to obviously join World Central Kitchen, but we are doing it because he's there in his community, being supported by everybody and in the process, making sure that he can feed as many people we can in Harlem. The same can apply to every other city across the United States. Okay, World Central Kitchen can't do what it does without funding. There's the Mike Bloomberg's out there who gave you $6 million, but then there's obviously, I imagine, a lot of small donors. How does World Central Kitchen keep on keeping on? What the people of World Central Kitchen we do is we show that we show up every time, the first boots on the ground. This is, is a lot of donations, but a lot of things. You have to buy food, you have to pay for things, and we are okay with that. Thousands of people that every time it's an emergency can be in Florida, California, North Carolina, that they come and they see what we do on the ground and they support us. When you go to bed at night, do you think, man, we accomplished so much today? Or do you go to bed thinking, oh my God, we have so much more to do. How will we ever get there? If everybody was fed, I will tell you we're doing okay. It's what we are here for. So for me, when I go to bed, quite frankly, it's more the anxiety of knowing that I was in Baltimore the other day and it's these children that they were a few days without a meal and, and, and that's it. And, and you are happy because that day you were able to provide food, but you know that there's many more like them. And the urgency of now is yesterday when you talk about food. So uh, I don't feel successful. I don't think what's into a kitchen uh, ever feel successful because for us is this anxiety of making sure that success means that nobody, nobody eats hungry. Well, Jose, thank you so much for doing what you do and please stay safe, okay? All right, Thanks. thank you, Jose. All right, thank you so much, Jose Andres. Uh, truly an amazing human being and thank you, World Central Kitchen. 
uh, for doing so much incredible work these past seven weeks. Um, Brad Leone. Yes, sir. Thank on the show. You. <laughs> for having me. <laughs> Very <laughs> welcome. Word on the street is, Brad, we've raised $69,333 already, and we're only like 25 minutes into the show. If we keep going, you're going to perform a song, and I might join you. <laughs> Word on the street is, yeah, we might set an a little jingle. I got one of my favorite songs I've been practicing. All right, it's real catchy. It's a good one. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe we raise a little more money. I'll uh, set an but, but you know what? So that's going to happen. But also, while we're at it, um, Brad, you know what? We make a magazine at Bon Appetit. A handsome one at that. Exactly. And you know what? Uh, if you guys would subscribe, any of you listeners, viewers out there, $10 for the year, and by subscribing to Bon Appetit, that allows us to make the videos you guys love, the podcasts, the Instagram, all those things that we love to do to get to you guys. That all starts with the magazine and a subscription. So if you go to the subscription link, if you go to the description of the YouTube thing, 10 bucks for the whole year. And if you subscribe now, you'll probably get the June, July issue, which has a feature on Brad Leone and all his growing tips and techniques. Right, Brad? Yes, sir. Good one, too. I tell you what, uh, that was a really fun story. Beautiful food, delicious food, and uh, yeah, let's raise some more money and uh, I mean, wrap up. I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this here for the first time. Do you know that you got the cover for the June July issue? Your story is the cover story. Really? First recipe. Yeah, really. That's the first for me, man. Yeah, exactly. That's worth playing a song too. You finally made it. But all right, as pursuant to none of this, uh, one thing that the BA Test Kitchen team loves. Almost as much as food and cooking. Do you know what that is, Brad? Uh, wine. <laughs> yes, wine, vodka, whiskey. They love their pets. So let's meet the BA Test Kitchen pets right now. Oh my Whoa. God, Sola, who is that guy? This little smush face is Clementine. She what, is a what, year and a half. Uh-huh, what kind of dog? She's an English bulldog. Oh, how much does she weigh? She weighs 45 pounds and most of it is not. <laughs> One of my favorite things on Instagram is watching you give your dogs baths. How often does Clementine get a bath? She's pretty stinky. She needs a bath like once every week or two. But in your kitchen sink. In, in my kitchen sink, yeah. Highly recommend following Sola on Instagram just for the bath moments at the least. Uh, but Clementine's not your only pet. I hear you got, where's Vito? Is Vito around? Vito is around. He is being shuffled to me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, he is. He's coming. He's he's, he's coming. making he's, he a, there he's he making comes, his Vito. <laughs> Oh, Vito, oh, a, sh a, sh a Shiba Inu, which is my kid's favorite dog. They're kind of internet famous these dogs, but they're very particular, right? <laughs> they're, uh, they're very particular. They take a while to uh, love you or even care <laughs> that you're around. And even then, they're kind of like cats. It's like on their terms. I'm about to say it coming. sounds sounds like a cat, but wait, you also have a cat. I also have a cat. And her I name is Lucifer. Add, her name is Lucifer. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to let you go now. So goodbye to Vito, Clementine, and Lucifer. And let's bring on the next Test Kitchen pet. See you later. Hola. Hey. Hi, Gabby. How are you? Good. How's Pucho? Pucho um, decided not to show up for the show and tell. So... <laughs> I put oh, a ball very head. comfortable. I know. It's his second nap after dinner. I love his eyebrows. Really nice. I know, right? Dynamic eyebrows. Yes. Yeah, I know. Dramatic. Yeah. A lot of people are jealous of his eyebrows. So, you oh, know, he's an old guy. He's 10 oh. now. Oh, boy. Yeah. So he needs to get his rest. It's important. Exactly. You know, yeah. we had a quick walk before this and... I had a whole thing that he was going to give me five, but oh, he's opening his eyes. Hello, world. Oh Hello, Pucho. He's I like, like Vito. Vito. Come back another day. 
How are you? I'm great. It's been great. The dogs have been enjoying all the extra time. But I guess I'm going to head out. Someone else is popping in. So I'll, I'll see you guys later. Bye, Pucho. Bye, Gabby. Bye. <laughs> Oh, hey. I'm still there. I'm still here. Oh my god. We're all god. still here. It's Felix. Hi. Say hi, oh, Kitty. You guys, I was kind of sweaty after the speed test, and then Felix started cuddling me, and I've been like tarred and feathered with his fur all over my face. Ah! <laughs> so <laughs> funny. Your cats look alike. I know. I know they're they're present. They put their tuxedos on. Felix is adorable. This is Peggy. Peggy. Hi, Hi. Hi. What is that? They, dre they dress for the occasion. Yeah, yes. they totally did. Well, I must stand up because I'm still on the floor, guys. <laughs> I had to drop oh, our cat Peggy. off with our friends for the next couple of weeks. But I, I made you guys a slideshow. <laughs> this is like Aww. the first time we've ever done this. That's her in the background when Allie was like a tiny baby. <laughs> How old is she? She's like 15 or 16. But oh, yeah, wow. we're, gonna be, we're heading out of town for a couple weeks and uh, we wanted her to be with like people, you know, just to talk to her, so. Yeah. She's an Chris, old Chris, I swear to God, this is the first I, I think I knew you had a cat. How have I known <laughs> I you for quiet. almost 10 I years? <laughs> You've been on the DL. I cat again, you know, and you file. <laughs> like, I don't Yeah, know. right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cat people. Bye guys. See you later. Bye, Gabby. Keep donating money, people. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Peggy left. Oh, it's the dog show. Delaney. Oh, look at those show. guys. <laughs> you guys. Hey oh, oh, look at these doggos. <laughs> Andy, what's her name? Uh, her name is Goldie. She's a terrier chihuahua. She has a natural smoky eye. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you look closely, she has a natural smoky eye. She's perfect. <laughs> uh, Very sweet. Uh, this is Wilson, and Wilson <sighs> is out for a uh, poodle border collie mix. Very Gorgeous. chill. I think chill is his dominant characteristic. <laughs> Gorgeous dog. Beautiful. Oh, nice. Definitely a good pup. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we're gonna get a couple more people, maybe a couple more pets in, so. Great. Wilson, say goodbye to everyone. No? Okay. Uh, He's, no. Nice. He wants you to stay, but definitely <laughs> chill. <laughs> Tunes. Yeah. Tunes. I brought the hot dog. <laughs> oh, my pet is is on the move right now. Oh, my oh, meal. Okay, a meal. Oh my god. Oh, she's just going. She doesn't like to be held too much. Hold on. Right there. Ah. What's your pet's name, Emil? Yuffie. Yuffie? Yuffie. Yuffie. That says right here. Oh. Do you sleep with Yuffie? Of course. Right under, right, right at the foot of the bed. That sounds dirty. I think my, it sounds dirty. I think my pet is the only one of all of these that actually that cleans, cleans up. Itself. It takes a shit and, and cleans up after itself? You know, it, it, <laughs> it, it never goes. What if I think <laughs> might be the perfect pet? And my, my house isn't covered in hair. I think I have the perfect pet, if I'm being totally honest, because I have a oh, literal Look at the hot way you're dog. holding Tuna. The hot dog, this is how she's supposed to be held. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love you guys, miss you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you soon.
Man, those are some (laughs) seriously fashionable pets you got there. I sure hope Anna Wintour is watching right now. She, you know, she said she was going to watch as a colleague of ours. She said she was going to watch. Hi, Anna. Um, Hi, Anna. (laughs) You know, know, as fashionable as as Tuna is and Emile's weird vacuum cleaner pet thing. She has a name. Hey, man, I'm sorry. That's really rude, Adam. I didn't know the name. I haven't met her before. Yuffie. Yuffie or Yuffie? Yuffie. Yuffie. Okay, guys, Emil, as fashionable as Yuffie is, I want to say the test kitchen editors are even more fashionable. So let's check out some of their most fashionable moments. Hope you guys aren't screwing me on this mask, man. I've got a real bad feeling about this. Well, wow. Oh God. Is this like some weird like Phantom of the Opera sh-? It can't be something that's gonna freak out my kids, okay? Action. There's also something I feel that's missing from your life right now. Talk to that's me. That's gonna help you get into the mode. Okay. Bam! <laughs> Here oh we are. my God, I feel incredible. You're ready, you're I in the mood. pickle worthy. Oh my I, goodness. We're gonna do this now. So just plop that guy down. Bam! Damn. Yeah, I need a petty. Sorry. You look great right now, Rick. I'm wearing Claire's father's clothes. I'm wearing sneakers that are embroidered with the Swag words C and Sal for Caesar Caesar salad. Why? Because sea sal is my favorite is one of my favorite wow. dishes in the world. That's intense, Molly. It's spelled wrong, which is kind of annoying because my husband f-ed up the customization and didn't realize it, but I still think it's commitment. Hut had a article that was like, are sweatsuits appropriate to wear out, out of the house? Obviously, I feel that it is. But I don't, but not all the time. I just had a really late night and I just wanted to be comfortable. Oh, my God. Hey Emil. Yeah, and we were kind of like talking about you a little bit over there, just like how you kind of like you're you're looking like a little bit like a character from I don't know, like maybe like Wes Anderson film or like Royal okay. Time Bombs or right. something today okay. a little bit. You got like your glasses rolling, you know. Yep, you know. Strong sometimes you need up. to like warm things up a little bit. I woke up late today in a panic and I was oh, like, God. the world is too cold. Oh, I knew I liked you. You keeping the vampires away? Yes. You ever hear my theory about that? No. Well, I'll tell you later. She dressed pretty appropriately with your oh, yeah. earrings. Yeah, Have you ever eaten with them? No. Well, in a pinch, you know. Oh, yeah, it's like, I'm gonna forgot my uh, fork. I'm just gonna acknowledge right now, I'm wearing a shirt. Gabby just came over and just like, oh, that shirt. But I'm wearing a holy shirt. I forgot that I'm on camera today. Don't worry, there won't be any, I don't know. Yeah, malfunctions. Loose hairs. So in regards to this shirt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it out for a second. I didn't buy it from Sex Fan. It's Winona Ryder, who, whom I really, really love. She had a little bit of an incident in the early aughts and she stole from Sex Fan. guys we are back yeah there you go all right molly and andy guys did you know did you know that we just topped ninety thousand dollars in donations for world central kitchen that's pretty amazing yeah and we're going for 45 minutes at 45 minutes we better hit 200 i I think we at least hit 200 by the time this whole thing's over um okay so andy you're a little bit of a competitive guy right 
No, I have all, no, 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 no. All of us are competitive. I just lost, I supposedly, in the whipped cream. I think I got in third place, not fourth place, but we'll talk about it later. Molly, I think I, it's fair to say Andy's the most competitive guy in the test kitchen, right? A hundred percent. And no. he also, for the record, Mo brings up Molly, the worst in me. Molly is by far the most competitive. And no, you know what? Only I, around you, Andy, you bring out my worst yeah. No, qualities. can I say this? Molly is professional. She works really hard to do her best. Thank you. As do you, Andy, but more than that, you just hate to lose. Andy Baragani hates I, I to lose. I do not like to anyone. lose. I don't I do not like to lose. True. Okay, it's here's the no problem. Te test kitchen trivia. Here are the rules. Okay. I'm gonna ask you guys three questions. You've got your pot in your pan or whatever to, to buzz in. Uh, whoever gets the most correct answers advances to the next round. That simple. Okay. I call on you. I don't answer until I call on you. Cool. Okay. All right, ready. Are you ready for question number one? Ready. And you got to buzz first. When jalapeno peppers or when jalapeno chilies are smoked and dried, they become known as what? Andy Bergani. Chipotle. You are correct, Andy Bergani. All sorry. right. Wait, can no. I, sorry, can I clarify something? Are we allowed to cut you off <sighs> you finish asking the question? This is what we did for the bell house. It applies Well, we were on the same team there. You can, you I can know, cut and me unfortunately off. You can cut not. me off, but I'm not going to finish the question. And if you don't, if you need more info, then that's too but bad. But you finished the question. Um, well, I had the right answer. Guys, guys, we actually sorry. have a time limit on this show, and there's other segments that are coming up. Lots, lots of good segments. <laughs> oh, by the way, the Beans t-shirts you're wearing, sorry, I digress, designed by our own Chris, Chris Aguera and the BA Art Department, all proceeds go to World Central Kitchen. You can buy them at shop.bonappetit.com, or you can see the link in your YouTube description. Uh, they're awesome. I don't know what color. What is that? Lilac or something? I don't know, but it's beautiful. Uh, thank you, Krista, for the design. We're all eating beans right now. There's nothing more that we love than beans kind of in the BA test kitchen. So buy these shirts and support Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen. All right, next question. All right, let's go back to the show. Oh, this is like a, this is like a Chris Morocco smart guy question. Or I bet Claire, because she went to a fancy college. All right. What do you call onions and other alliums that make you cry? Exactly. Look at Molly's face. Andy, you just wrote an entire story on alliums, literally, in the I, April issue of Bon Appetit. Can you repeat the question one more time? Yes. What do you call onions and other alliums that make you cry? I'm going to give you a hint, yeah, guys, because neither of you know. The answer starts with the letter L. I'm going to drink my beer. Andy, I really wish we could consult each other right now. I know. I, we should be on the same team. Yeah, well, I, I'm just going to say this. Uh, the answer, <laughs> I didn't know this, uh, and I edited a food magazine, is lacrimators. Lacrimators? Lacrimators? I'm, I, I'm very curious if anybody on staff knew that. Nerd alert. Yeah, I don't know who did these questions. Anyways, all right. Next question. You could be going home right now, Molly, if you don't get this one. Okay, I understand. Long question. Okay. According to the International Bartenders Association definition, or if you went to like Florida State or something, which of Bartender the following, Lane. yeah, which of the following is not, I repeat, is not an ingredient in a Long Island iced tea? Oh my God. Okay. Tequila, Cointreau, aged rum, light rum. Which is not? Molly. Cointreau. Wait. You Wait, are no. incorrect. Aged rum is not. Wait, I should be able to answer that. It doesn't matter. When you advance because you got one of three questions. Right. Molly, right. you're going home. It's been Molly, nice going. I, yeah. Molly, I love Hi. you. You're my sister. I love you so much. I miss you. But he's just saying so he loves you. you. He's just saying he win. loves you because he won. No, I'm no. really happy for you, Andy. I really am. Uh, All right, next up. Who do we got? Uh, Carla Music, are you there? Is Carla in, is she in the room? Her mute button's still on. Yes, there's I'm Carla. Here. I'm okay. here and I'm loud. Oh, you got the beans shirt also. Yeah, man. Yeah. I like the kind of 90s thing you did where you rolled the sleeves up. It's a little bit big, so I just thought I'd give it a little flair. There you go, I like it, Wait, well done. <laughs> All right, so you know the rules. Three questions, you got your device to buzz. Whoever gets the most right out of those three gets to move on to the next round. Ready. Okay. How many eggs are in BA's best omelet? Carla. Wait, no, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, that was Andy. I think I Andy that. had it. Yeah, I think Andy, Andy you need something it. louder. Andy, that glass, why are you doing a glass? No, I can't hear that. No one can hear that. 
get something big. It's like you're in some like architectural digest <laughs> show kitchen out there in Long Island. Do you have any Don't actual me. cooking tools? <laughs> okay. All right. The answer Go ahead. is three eggs. Eh, wrong. Carla, do you care to guess? I mean, I guess I'll guess two. You're correct. Way to go, Carla. All but right. if I, had, I was with you, Andy. We, we, yeah, that it should. It should I'm surprised. Classic, it's one of yeah, those. I yeah. I would oh, say well, if you're gonna sorry. if you're gonna ask a classic French chef, it's typically three eggs, right? Isn't it, Carla? Yeah, that's yeah, why. I, that's, anywho, yeah. doesn't matter. Right. I got the point. So, this Andy, you have a good. Update. Do you have something loud that I that we can actually hear? All right. Next up. <laughs> All right. There you go. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Better. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a good one. This is very inside baseball, inside BA. In the past year, Chris Morocco has held three different official titles at Bon Appetit. Mm. What are those titles? Senior food editor. Okay. Deputy food editor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Test kitchen director. You are correct. Wow, that was impressive. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay, wow. guys, we're tied. People still, people do read mastheads. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Not, yeah, everyone does, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and that's tough because you used to be food director, Carla, right? So we actually but, tweaked the title. So the fact that I Andy saw got that, that actually. Yeah. Yep. Because now you're Morocco and I, we share a Go. station, Morocco and that's myself, true. you know, we're very yeah. close. Yeah, because yeah. it's all about the test kitchen. All right, here we go. Wow. That's going to be impressive if you get this one. All right. Fish sauce, a favorite in the BA test kitchen and much of the world, is often grated. For example, 40 degrees N. What does the N stand for? Longitude and latitude? <laughs> <laughs> that, neither of those words start with N, but yeah. All right, you guys aren't getting this one. I'm just gonna let you. Stands for, no. stands for no. Go ahead, Andy. Hazard a guess. I I have a I don't want to I, I have an idea, but I don't want to guess it. I, I, don't I mean, wanna... you don't get points taken away, so. Yeah, you might as well because you're going home otherwise. Because well Carla. What Carla's do you mean? No, it's one to one. No, he oh, it's one to one. Two. Sorry. I got it's, nothing. It's... Oh, one to one. one no, to you one. do. Yeah, you got the, you got the egg. So yeah, so it's one to one. Do you want a hazard a guess or no? We're moving no, on. No, it's, no, nit no. it's nitrogen per liter. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so here's technical. another tough one because the answer is a word I've never hear, heard for before. All right, ready? Here we go. What is the green top of an eggplant called? Oh, oh. Wow. Um, oh, actually, this makes sense. I bonged. Is it the calyx? You are correct. Oh, my God. Yes. Carla Music, high five. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I, I just have to say, if there's and the I love only person things. that I'm willing to lose to is Carla. So I'm very okay Aww. with this. All right. and, and to lose over nightshade, it seems appropriate. <laughs> it feels is right. Is that like a cow lick on the top of your head, <laughs> Carla? Is that a, like a cow lick? Yeah, the, you know, the little thing on the top of your, that people have like where the hair comes together. Anyways, all right, Priya and Crystal, welcome, welcome from Dallas. And you've got your Thank shirt you. on also, awesome. I've got my shirt on. Nicely done. Okay, so here we go, three questions. Do you have a, a device to bang? Cool. Thank you. You put something it. something loud, <laughs> unlike Andy Barragani. Delic <laughs> delicate Andy Barragani. All right. So three questions. Whoever gets two or one, the most who gets them right, moves on. Okay. Got it. Oh, this is a good one. Because hmm. it's about me. Uh, what oh. is Adam's favorite frozen pizza? Priya. Um, it's the DiGiorno, like the pepperoni. Yes, that's good. You know what? Hey, hey, Priya. <laughs> it's 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 not delivery. It's DiGiorno. It's DiGiorno. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good that. one. I used to love DiGiorno as a kid. <laughs> yeah, see, it's the deep dish, crispy side one. Very, okay. very. It's like Detroit pizza, but at home. Uh, everyone in Detroit is going to kill me right now. Okay. Uh, true or false? Oh no. Oh, no. I, there, I cut you, off. Shoot. Uh oh, wait. Ah. Who cut up? We lost Priya. She froze. Cut, I cut. Dad, the internet is unstable. Oh no! <laughs> wait, stable. I didn't. I didn't. What was the question? Yeah, she's back. She's cool. back. We waited. It. We waited. Guys, I told you at the beginning of the show that wait. we're live and anything can happen. Can my, you hear Priya? My dad said. My dad said the internet was good. <laughs> okay, Dad. Dad. <laughs> 
<laughs> your dad's on his third cocktail right now. Okay. Is, Anyways, all right, here we go. True, <laughs> all right. True or false? You could watch Tiger King in its entirety in the same in the time it takes to cook Bon Apps set it and forget it pork shoulder. True or false? Yes. I think that's true. You are correct. Cook time is nine to ten hours. Forever. That's insane. Why? I mean, I, wow. I watched Tiger King in like two short nights. <laughs> um, okay, and our so, internet is bad, so I'm going to run inside. Uh oh, wait, did Priya just say she's running inside? <laughs> yeah, I'm running inside because our internet is bad. I don't want to miss the third question. Anything can happen on the BA Test Kitchen Variety Show. Okay, now right, I'm guys. at the bar right next to the wireless router. All right, guys. <laughs> this is a tiebreaker, rubber match, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, wow. This is a good one. Getting back to the uh, packaged goods departments, the CPG world. How many cheeses are in an original Hot Pocket? What? Yes, Priya. Is it three cheeses? You are incorrect. <sighs> Carla, um... do you have... Hazard, yes, Carla. I don't know. I'll just guessing like a Quattro Formaggio thing. Four you cheeses? are correct. Four cheeses. <laughs> oh my God. Carla Music, you advance. Priya, say hi to your dad. Have I a will. drink on us. I'll complain about the internet. <laughs> wow. The lady with the backwards shirt. Well played. Up, baby. Okay. well played. All right, you know the rules. You got your device. Cool. Here we yes. go. What does the popular Italian dessert tiramisu translate to in English? Yes, Carla. Give me a kiss. No. <laughs> I can't believe you got that wrong. As a coffee lover, you better get this one, Delaney. And you're Italian, Carla. Come on. Oh, uh, this is the thing that like I know I know, but I don't know. So I'm going to just say Carla was wrong. <laughs> it, it stands for, uh, translates to pick me up or pull me up because of the espresso uh, and the dessert. And they kind of like, picks give me you a up. kiss means pick me up, give me a kiss. No. <laughs> it's like after Maybe dinner, eat a bunch of. Use those two interchangeably. Yeah. You know, okay, when guys. you like, you lift your girl up and you give her a big kiss. <laughs> okay, we're doing a game show here. All right, ready. Uh, wow, this is interesting. I don't know who did these questions, but they did a hell of a job. Okay, the name of which popular soft drink was inspired by a common nickname for moonshine? Yes, Delaney. Uh, I don't know if it's this popular. Is it cheer wine? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not wine, bro. What else? Think about it. Where where is moonshine made, Carla? Who's who's running it back in the day? Like you know the Duke Duke boys and stuff. Um, Who's here from Adam? I mean, root beer. No, Mountain Dew. Oh, uh, that, that that's out. good. Yeah, kind of like, like in the Smoky Mountains or somewhere, running some shine. Uh -huh. You're still and everything. Totally. Okay, guys. So Carla's got one correct one. Wait, no, what question oh. from Maja was for us. You, have, you guys are both 0 for 2. So this next person, if one of you gets this, you move on, okay? And so then it's all if on the we line both right lose, here. then you win? What happens? No, yeah, then I get to put a shirt on. <laughs> okay, here we go. You can get those shirts again at shop.bonappetit.com. All right. Beans. By the way, I've been making oh, your okay. beans. I've been adding schmaltz to the pot. I've been in olive so oil. Schmaltz. They're so good. The, the amount of... At more fat, more salt. That's what your pot of beans needs. That's right. Okay. Shout out to Patch. Yeah, Love it's not Patch. health food. Thank you, Patch Trofer. All right. Out. What popular cereal was created for the Kellogg Company in 1928? Carla. Cornflakes. No. Delaney. Uh, Cheerios. That's actually not Kellogg's, so no. I don't that's, know. Uh, <laughs> Can I Kellogg's go doesn't make, yeah, that, that, that's the one made up in Buffalo. Uh, the po which we one's just go back and forth. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, what do you got? What do you got, Raisin Bran. Raisin Bran. No. Uh, 
Rice Krispies. Yes, you are the winner. Oh, oh. Move it on. <laughs> Call it music. Go home. Bye. Sorry, so Carla. I got Calyx. I'll be famous forever you for Calyx. <laughs> All right. Rick Martinez. Welcome okay. from Mazatlan, Mexico. Yes. You know, oh, thank you. I feel, wait, is Rick in? Rick's here. Okay, here we go. I see Rick. I see me. Is, is Delaney still there? We lost Delaney. Wait, so I win. Rick, I, I think this is the first time I've seen you not wearing a tank top like in two months. It, it is actually <laughs> the first time I've actually put on a shirt with sleeves. I did roll up a little bit. So. There you go. Why? I always say, why wear a shirt if you don't have to? Exactly. Uh, what's the temperature down there in Mazalan, Mexico right now? Uh, right now, it's actually starting to go down. It's about 81. Oh, God. God, that sounds nice. <laughs> All right, you. so you know the, you know, you know the rules. Uh, yep. Three questions. Whoever gets the most right answers advances. Cool. All right, and you got to bang your pot, and then I'll call on you to, to answer. Okay. How long after opening does cornstarch expire? Ooh. How long after opening does cornstarch expire? Delaney? Um, six months. No. I, yeah. Go ahead, Rick. All right, I'm going to say a year. No. Apparently, the, the question guys say never. What? Who knew? Never. Yeah. Go stock right. up on cornstarch during these, <laughs> or don't stock up. Or don't. Goes bad. Yeah, or just yeah. like use the thing you have. <laughs> Okay, this is an interesting one. If you, if anyone gets this, we might run out of questions. But what is Maxwell House Coffee named after? Uh, Delaney, you're like Mr. Coffee, and you totally whiffed on Terry Misu. <laughs> and right now, you don't know about Maxwell House. So this is not third wave coffee. It's not like some so pour over. Many people watching this, you're shaming me like this in front of everyone. All right, what if it was Maxwell House Cortado? Would you know that answer? <laughs> I would certainly know that answer. <laughs> Um, okay, you're not gonna get this. Well, wait. Unless I'll, you I try. Yeah. I'll wager a guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a house that someone named Maxwell owned. <laughs> Close. Uh, <laughs> it's a. It was a hotel. Maxwell House was named after its first major customer, the now defunct Maxwell House Hotel of Nashville, Tennessee. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are zero for two. Let's see if anyone can get this one question correct and you will move on whoever gets this question correct oh this is an interesting one actually i would not like this but it's interesting <laughs> what was the original flavor of twinkies filling i gave you a little hint with, with my comment yes i'll say go chocolate. ahead no who doesn't like chocolate banana, banana you are correct banana oh. cream the lady moving on <laughs> Martinez, so glad to see you down there. You Bye, can take Rick. the shirt off now and get back in your tank top. Yes. Yeah, change. <laughs> All right. Next up, I think our final, I think our final contestant. Hey, think he oh, here oh, he comes. God. Chris Morocco. This, here, is Alex. Not, this is not good for me. How'd you sneak in? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. He's been like, this is like watching the NCAA basketball tournament when like some small school in Southern Virginia gets the, oh, yeah. the, the, oh, the, the la round of eight or something. I'm a 15 seed right now. I'm, I'm riding the wave. Yeah. You're like, you're like V, you're like v, VCU or something. Um, <laughs> speaking of Virginia, go, if anyone knows it's the mascot of Virginia Commonwealth University, please, please text me. Okay. Um, so Chris, three questions. And whoever gets these right. You're holding a knife, Chris? Is, is I'm holding the, a knife. I'm holding a knife and a swell. That's what I have. Tactics. <laughs> Chris doesn't mess around. He doesn't mess around, Dylan. You better ready to go. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. This is interesting. Okay, which of the following is not a recipe that is included in the list of BA's best recipes featured on bonappetit.com? So which is not a BA's best recipe? Got it? Yeah. Here are your four and potential answers. A, beef and bacon meatloaf. B, daiquiri. C, tuna casserole. D, hot fudge. Tuna casserole. Oh, you are incorrect. Oh. 
Delaney. Uh, Daiquiri. It's Daiquiri. You are correct. Daiquiri. Yeah. But I have a drink for that. Oh, of course. Okay. He's nothing with a drink answer. It's, it's just, it's cheating. All right. Whatever. I know. We, we kind of teed him up, but you you got the first answer wrong. So, okay. So, okay. Here we go. This this is win or go home, basically, right here for you, Chris. Whew. Okay. I don't, we got a lot of good CPG questions in this, uh, in this uh, uh, show. What, this is, what is this? Okay, if you get, if anyone gets this question right, I've given you a raise. What does the try or the tr, try, tr, in Trisket stand for? What does the tr in Trisket stand for? Who did that? I did. Alzo. All right, go ahead. Um, it, well, this is de probably wrong, but I want to say there's like three kinds of wheat, so triple wheat. Yeah, that's what I would think. No. No? <laughs> no. All right, I'm staying silent then. It, this literally makes no sense. It stands, for, it stands for electricity. No. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, oh well, you know that little... Right that little buzz you get after you eat a bunch of tr the Trisket. Wait, get Corey in the in the green room in the little control room just said the first Trisket was made with what do you what was it was made with electricity? What'd you say about crackers? It's the first cracker made with electricity. Wow. That is bananas. Okay, guys, you're over two. How about a few? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, I got one. Oh, you got one. Sorry, man. Yeah. Okay, so 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 Chris, you can redeem yourself and push this into a. Uh, Sudden death over time. All right, all right, here we go. Okay, this is interesting because, I, you know what, I'm not gonna do this one control room because someone can go first and then the other person will be able to copy that. I'm gonna come to another one. Oh, this is a good one. If one of you doesn't get it right, you're both fired. When did Bon Appetit magazine begin? Delaney. Uh, oh, shit. Um, 1957. So close. Oh, so no, close. No, no. Chris Morocco, do you hazard a guess? Why, why would I know that? Wait, can I redeem? That's the magazine you were Can I redeem? 1956. You are correct. Yes. yes. Chris Morocco. Wow. So, so you are. Oh, back, can you believe that? Back. This magazine was founded in 1956, back when people said things like Bon Appetit. Okay. <laughs> All right, sudden death. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Okay. Yes. I want the three primary ingredients in this substance. And that substance is white chocolate. Delaney. Um uh cocoa butter. Yes. Um sugar. Yes. And Oh God. Salt? No. <clears throat> Chris, you want to jump in there? Like Laney said plus like milk solids or like milk um, so what's your give me an answer don't you, you can't just say what the lady all right, said. all right all right all right all right, all right. yeah i've never said that before and it was yeah. a mistake yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you really want to quote yeah. alex lady walk around cocoa town? butter whoa, 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 whoa. cocoa <laughs> butter sugar and milk solids you are correct <laughs> Chris morocco you have won test kitchen trivia uh, 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 uh. all right Listen, guys, I have to say, I know it's a family show and everything, but I just had a bit of a feeling I was going to win that mother. God, motherfucker. We like to, like, curse on TV. <laughs> it's not real TV. It's YouTube. <laughs> what was your name again? <laughs> Rusty. Rusty, shut the f*** <laughs> up. fine, Rusty. No, you got a bad <laughs> attitude. Grapes over there. <laughs> if I was the inspector and closing the restaurant right now, <laughs> it's enormous. A monster. Fuck that thing is the size of a baseball. <laughs> Out of the hole. Spider -Man. Spider -Man. Oh man, fuck that. I'll do anything but spiders. <laughs> and I know this is an April Fool's episode, but if this is full of human, sh we're gonna have words. <laughs> so now, oh, do I have it in my batter? Yeah, I guess I'm putting it in the oil. Oh, great. What is that? Cheese. Okay, it's Red Lester. Red Lester. Ah! You. Like. Miserable. 
Genau. Ja. Andy! Hey, Rick. We're, we're like halfway done. We're halfway done. Uh, I believe you know the exact number that we've raised yes. thus far. So, wait for it. Over $104,000. Can you believe that? Good. And we've been on air for what? We've been live for... An hour? Like an hour, 10, 11 minutes? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's get to 200, though. I want to double it. Yeah, well, I think you're gonna have to like remove some clothing for that to happen. But you know. <laughs> no, 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 not on live. Um, <laughs> but they're actually like you can keep donating. Just like click below. Um, we're gonna be here for another hour. We got lots of stuff left to go. Do we have another hour? I don't think if we have another hour, Greg. I think you're wrong about that. <laughs> Uh, but first off, I really wanted to uh, thank one of our sponsors, Don. Thank you so much to Don Power Wash for their sponsorship. A Bon Appetit's Test Kitchen Variety Show today, uh, benefiting the World uh, Central Kitchen. We, we really appreciate it and thank you. And also a really big shout out and a thank you to all of our friends at Bush's Beans. They have done so much uh, to get this show off the ground and to help us uh, in our support and our mission behind helping World Central Kitchen. So thank you so, so much. I have a question for you. How hot is it over there in, in Mazatlan? It's about 81. Like it, the high today was like 85. Yeah, it's really nuts. Yeah, this is the first time I've worn clothes all day. So it's it's like a let's say like high 50s right now on Long Island. Oh God. Oof. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, we still have a lot more to to go. So I think uh, what's happening up next. So if you are a fan of the test kitchen, you are definitely a fan of Meme Appetit. And oh, yes. we talked to these guys, we like look through some of our favorite memes and uh, yeah, we're about to show you what we did. <laughs> Take a <laughs> look. Scratches his head. <laughs> Hi, I'm Harry. And I'm Will. And together we run Meme Appetit. You might know us from some of these. Contrary to popular belief, Matt Ducko does not run this account. We're actually just two fans from England. We are, like everyone else watching this video, huge fans of BA. And we're going to talk to some of the Test Kitchen staff today, and we're going to go behind the meme. Ah, uh, behind the meme. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? How are you? Hi, guys! <laughs> I don't know if this is like a dream or if this is a nightmare, but <laughs> the frig is it? Hold on a second. You guys talking about McDonald's? This is inspired by a John Mulaney skit. You're in a car with your children. You see a McDonald's sign, and the kids are screaming McDonald's, McDonald's, McDonald's. And then there's three options. You can either say we've got food at home and refuse. You can also get excited and take the kids to McDonald's. Or you can do the power move of pulling in, ordering a single black coffee and leaving. And you guys have me at the bottom being like, oh, 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 don't, all right, let's go get a Happy Meal. I haven't stepped foot in the McDonald's in like 20, almost 18 years. I, we don't, I don't, I don't go to fast food. I just don't, we don't do it. Oh, you guys, you guys <laughs> that one up. <laughs> Big time. You guys don't know me. You guys don't know anything. Oh gosh, no, we're, we're not going to McDonald's. Well, okay, I guess my first question is, who did this? <laughs> because they're fired. I would take all the hands of this name. Oh, Harry. You hurt my feelings, Harry. I think anyone who's familiar with my enthusiasm for anything Claire Saffitz has ever worked on will like make the pretty obvious deduction that I am uh, like a junk food kid. It's totally wrong for Brad. Thanks, Peg. I, I, uh, I filled them in. He's made that very clear. Yeah, he's at the top of the triangle. We have food at home, mother Whoa, whoa, Peg, family show. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Delaney's got some weird, like, you know, um, McDonald's flex for sure. I will say McCafe Coffee is, like, 
kind of underrated. The only food that I've eaten that hasn't been cooked by myself or one of my two quarantine mates was when I caved and went to the McDonald's drive-thru. I wouldn't be here. I would I would want to make my own McDonald's at home, but it wouldn't. I wouldn't be forced. I would volunteer. I need an another little bubble near Claire. <laughs> oh. I'm very excited to talk to Claire. Claire's been quite an elusive figure for us. She's never liked any of our posts. She doesn't follow us on Instagram. We feel like maybe she hates us. <laughs> So hopefully we'll find out that she doesn't. I sort of take the stance with me, my petite, that I do with the videos themselves, which is sometimes I stay away for a very long time and don't really look. And then sometimes I like in one day, like go through everything that I haven't seen. The day three curse real? The day, day three curse was invented by Dan. It is a total construct. I really do relate to this to, to these like photos of like, I'm like a little rough around the edges. Like I haven't been getting enough sleep or whatever. Oh, Delaney. Delaney comes down to the test kitchen more than any other person. And it's like five times a day. And so like, I'm usually happy to see him, but on a day three episode, I don't feel like explaining to Delaney for the 15th time that episode, what's going wrong. I mean, look, if, if there's any way that I can get some of Claire's frustration out and she can get across the finish line. Maybe I'm the unsung hero of Gourmet Makes in that regard. So many people sent me this. So they wasn't like a joke to send me this. They're like, we're, we're actually worried about this. Uh, he is looking with a deep sort of expression of skepticism and maybe a little bit of fear. No, 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 no. You guys see, you guys totally misinterpreted it. See, what's happening is we only have one pair of safety goggles in the kitchen, okay? And unless you're the person wearing the goggles, you like, you hang back, you know what I mean? Like you get like a little like pot lid shield, like whatever it takes. I was actually so delighted she even listened to me. Obviously this is from a gourmet make. When you were being just like wonderfully supportive to her. We're all really close with her. And so when she is feeling bad, when she is like kind of spiraling, it makes everyone feel equally as bad and you want to help her out. I am seeing one of my favorites, Meme Appetit. I love it. I love this one. I, it brought tears to my eyes when I saw it. Some people will DM me being like, should I save my pasta water and store it in the fridge for other things? And it's like, no, it's really, it's only there to help your sauces. I think it's gone a little blown out of proportion, like just how much I love pasta water. That was, I think that was my favorite one. It's so spot on. I mean, truly like with my actual boyfriend, I was like, if you don't make it with my parents, like, it's not gonna work. Dad, this is Will and Harry. They run an account on Instagram. Like, look at this one. Uh. <laughs> this one I've seen, everyone's showed me this because people kept telling me I look like this chick, but I don't know who she is. I've never seen Scooby-Doo, so I didn't know if I was supposed to be offended or not. And then I did a lot of thorough research on Velma and I'm like, I guess it's fine. This is, this, this meme is ridiculous. Like you guys, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... How do you feel about becoming something of a sex symbol? I, 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 I wouldn't... I don't feel entirely comfortable with it, I'll say that much. I think originally the way that I was very generously reading it was, you know, Andy may be a snack, but a meal is a whole meal. But I don't think that that's necessarily what you were trying to convey here. But hopefully they're not just thinking about that and they're actually looking at the food and reading the stories and watching the videos and not just looking at my ass. Oh my God, this is like the happiest day ever. I love babies, they're so cute. I was also getting secret pleasure from knowing that Brad and Chris had to do gourmet makes. We actually have a special guest with us if you wanna open your Zoom up. <gasps> oh my God, oh my God, it's Mike and Thea. Hi, hi Thea, oh my God. There you go, there you go. <laughs> my wife is holding up a cracker for her. <laughs> I can't wait for next time, whenever that is. I know, I was saying that before, I was like, I never thought I would say this, but it was like, I really, really miss doing gourmet makes. It's like, take me back. All right, cool. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Keep making them killer memes.
I'm here. All right. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Harry and Will. Um, yeah, just a quick check in. Um, we've raised over $113,000. Um, I'm sure. Well done, everyone. Um, so yeah, listen, you guys have all been asking a lot of questions about cooking during quarantine, and we, all of us, like all like I don't know, like 20 people on the screen right now, are here to answer as many of those questions as possible. So these questions uh, came in via um, YouTube. And first question, going to Sola. This is from Angelia. How to cut and prep your food more quickly and efficiently, especially if you don't have Sola's mad skills. How do we do it? <laughs> um, well, I think it's important to kind of channel Henry Ford a little. You want to think about things like develop a little assembly line. So if you're prepping carrots, you want to peel everything first and then chop everything. You know, work in groups so you're more efficient. Like it. Um, hey, Claire, this is a question from Mark Lukabin or Luca. Maybe the end is silent. Maybe it's not. Okay. How do I know my croissants and danishes have proofed enough? Okay, great question. So what I look for with a laminated pastry, like a croissant or a Danish, is you want to see that those layers of butter and pastry have visibly separated and the whole thing will be dramatically puffed. And especially with croissants, if you give the sheet pan a little bit of a shake, they should wiggle and wobble a little bit. So that's how you know that they are proofed enough. Mm. Wobbly croissants. Okay, that's mm. that's a good one. I haven't braved doing croissants yet because people are going to realize that I'm actually not that good when they come out. <laughs> company, but it's fine. Maybe I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be perfect. <laughs> um, Carla, I feel like this ingredient is near and dear to your heart and actually to so many of us. This is from Elizabeth Stormont. Where do you buy MSG and what do you incorporate it into? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. And I have my um, <laughs> my little MSG bottle with me. Um, so look for MSG in any Chinese, Korean, or Japanese grocery or buy it online. It's going to add a little savory richness. So anywhere that you might add a sprinkle of salt, like why not just use a little MSG. So on your um, rice stir fries, breakfast tacos, I would put it on fresh mango with chili and lime, corn on the cob, popcorn, just, you're never gonna run out of ways to use it. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, this question from Will the Neo. This is for Andy, um, someone who knows a lot about heat. Um, how do I cook with chili flakes? How do I cook with chili flakes? Every time I try, this just doesn't come out. How does he get the spice out, Andy? Well, so two ways. When you add chili flakes in the very beginning, it's essentially going to make the whole dish hot. You're blooming the chili. But when you add it at the end, you're going to get these nice, nice pops of heat. So that's how two different ways to use it. There's also a range of chilies, ones that are really mild, that are uh, more fruity, and ones that just are bursting with heat. So you got to know your chilies. Fair enough. Um, all right, from Dima Ramadan, Hi, I'd like to know where, when are the instances where fresh pasta or dried pasta are better for the dish you are making? Is it based on the traditional dish itself or on the flavors of whatever you're making? Molly, I'm gonna give this one to you. Okay, so I do think there's something to be said for tradition and there's a reason why certain traditional sauces are paired with certain shapes. But for me, when I think about what shape I am pairing with a sauce. It has less to do with whether it's fresh and more to do with like, what is the shape of that pasta? And will it cling to whatever my sauce is appropriately? So when you're making something like a ragu or like a sausage -y, greens and beans situation, look to a short pasta shape that might have like a crevice or a little hole where it's nooks and crannies that things can get stuck in, whereas like a pesto or cream sauce is better with a long pasta shape where it can just coat the whole noodle. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, nooks and crannies. That's all you had to say. Nooks Shout out nooks and crannies. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from Petro, amazing name. Um, how did my parents short me on that one? Um, <laughs> favorite, favorite dishes that their parents or family made when they were young. Yeah, you are like at your parents' house, maybe even with a parent behind you right now. My dad, my dad is making dinner behind us right now. <laughs> what are they making? He's making his from scratch pasta, where he makes wow. his entire sauce from scratch. That is the name for it. 
in addition to his rum <laughs> pasta, I grew up on a dish called Puri, which is on BA.com. It is an amazing dish of like chicky flour, yogurt, turmeric. Uh, you can add pakoras if you want. You sort of do it together to this like really creamy, tangy, rich concoction. It's so delicious over white rice. It's what I dream about the most. It is my childhood in a dish. I had your version of that and it was pretty stellar and I kind of like couldn't even believe it. I had um, I know it's like it's like an incomprehensible taste. You've never had anything like it. Yeah, no, it was it was cool. Um uh, all right, Gabby, this is from Jank Bunky. Okay. Wow. What did Jank Jank Bunky? Um, what does the BA test kitchen do to minimize food waste? And uh yeah, this is definitely something that we could hopefully all gain some insight into. Well, um, the first step will be keep a good eye on what you're shopping for. If you want to transport from the VA kitchen to a household uh, kitchen, I will say have a plan, stick to your budget, uh, mm -hmm. don't buy doubles, just plan ahead. Composting is a big one for us too. Uh, buying organic, buying local, and you know, like uh, stick to a plan and like if you uh, can give something a second life, just give it a try or, or make a large thing and freeze it. Don't just like give it away because it doesn't look perfect. You know, there are many, many ways to use vegetables and fruits and, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily have to look pretty always. <laughs> yeah. We've been, I feel like we've been passing around like stuff with contactless deliveries, you know, but I have some of like Che's pierogies in the freezer. Yes. He gave me some greens, you know, I gave Che some coffee, you know, there's like a fun little like barter thing going on right yeah. now. Um, yeah. All right, Brad. Yeah. Ella <laughs> Mac, two A's, Mac, okay? All right. Strong names tonight. Strong names. <laughs> um, what is a great project for somebody to get into if they're looking to start uh, like a fermentation project? Yeah, I mean, honestly, what I always tell people a great introduction fermentation recipe or project is sauerkraut because mm -hmm. it's an open it's an open book for variation and it's super simple. It's you'll you see results. Um, it's kind of hard to screw up and. Uh, and it's delicious and it's good for you. So, I mean, I always tell people who want to get into fermentation, sauerkraut is a, is a really good way to kind of get into it and start to feel it out and like get rid of some of those fears of like, oh my God, I'm going to die because something's right. rotting on my counter. You know, it's pretty safe. And salt is your friend. And uh, just remember, this is not new. We've been doing this for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. Of all the projects that you've made me eat, I feel like I feel the least like scared by like the like the cabbage related ones, you know. But. Yeah, yeah, that's safe to say, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, this is from Sofais. Um, can you tell us a list of the ultimate kitchen tools to start when you move into a space like by yourself, uh, Christina <clears throat> Che? Yes. Um, what did you say, Gabby? Nothing. People are popping questions. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. Um, I mean, beyond the obvious, a good knife, good cutting board that you love. Um, I would say that the three most important things for me are um, a heat proof rubber spatula will be your best friend for so many things in baking and cooking. Um, a set of stackable lightweight metal bowls. Um, obsessed with mine. Use those for everything every day. And a pair of very sharp kitchen scissors come yeah. in handy for way more than you Purple. think. Joy <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Emil, I'm going to kick this one over to you, even though Carla would be equally sort of well positioned to uh, answer it. Rice, Ooh. what is the secret to cooking rice perfectly? This is a question from Carrie Hank or Hanky unclear if you pronounce it you know hanky or hank we're just gonna go with it um especially brown rice hers never ends mm. up fluffy mm. oh okay all right carla you know if you need to jump in just uh, go ahead but <laughs> to me it's like all right these are, these are two separate questions white rice as far as white rice is concerned it's rinse it three or four times non-negotiable one cup of rice to one and a quarter cups of water. 
bring it up to a boil over the highest heat, cover it, drop it down to the lowest heat, 18 minutes, turn that heat off, get it off of that burner, <laughs> wrap the lid in a towel, extra credit, put it back on, let it rest for another 10. <laughs> <laughs> that's Carla thank you for the assist I appreciate that as far as brown rice is concerned I mean I I feel like the pasta cooking grains as pasta method <clears throat> for something like brown rice is the best just big pot of really salty boiling water get the brown rice in there <laughs> keep tasting you know as it goes and when it's uh, al dente Drain it off and then get it onto a sheet pan so that some of the the pores can um, you know evanesce and then you got some fluffy brown rice. <laughs> you, forgot the okay. <laughs> you forgot the most important ingredient, which is love. Oh, <laughs> I thought I thought I'd forgotten a real ingredient. Wait, what? I, really <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I forgot the water. <laughs> one cup of rice to one and a quarter cups of rice. And then... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it rice that time. <laughs> rice back at you, Carla. Um, question, Patty Garden. Um, gonna assume it's a nickname, but who knows? Um, how, so, okay, I'll take this one. How is cooking for your partners or children different from what we, you know, see us like produce in the test kitchen? Oh. For answer, <laughs> in my case, like it's, so different. I mean, I, I am the epitome of the, the, the parent who's cooking three different meals for like the various members of their family. Honestly, I have to make two kinds of pasta every time I make pasta. You know what I mean? Like I, I like, I like I asked Carla about this the other day. I was like, have you reached the point in your life where you can just make the same pasta dish with the same sauce for everyone in your family? And she confirmed. Carla, what did you say? We, we've had success with broccoli bolo, gotta say. Oh. Adam's Great. broccoli bolognese. Shout out to Adam. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so good. Big hit. Um, yeah, Everything I, is I, left big enough that you can pick around. If you don't like broccoli, you can just right, easily just, avoid it. I mean, my kids like broccoli, but it has to be steamed and and not mixed in with anything else, and it can never have sauce on it, and it can't even have butter on it. They, oh they, they're monster. like, they're free. Chris. I have the banana back here that's like, it's brown and mushy. Because they like brown and banana. <laughs> They compete to see whose spot, who has more brown mushy spots on it. Okay, that's what I've been doing. All right, this is my team. So anyway, um, Rick, question from Chris Chapa. Want to know about how you choose what you wear in front of the camera? Oh. <laughs> well, funny you should ask. So the the first requirement is a deep V. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, flowers, obviously, because it got to be bright. Um, actually, here, it's been a little bit different because I've been traveling around Mexico for the last seven months. And the only thing that I brought were like uh, a poncho and, and T-shirts. And so when I got to Mazatlan, <laughs> it was actually a lot hotter than any place that I had been. So I ended up, I mean, thankfully, um, H&M was still delivering. So I just ordered a ton of <laughs> tank tops. And so that's pretty much what I wear when I'm wearing anything at all. To be honest. But, um, but yeah, so uh, I was actually, this is the one shirt and I bought this in Oaxaca. Um, and it's the one kind of, like nice dressy shirt that, uh, that I have here with me. So that's why I chose this, but definitely flowers, colors. Yeah. Yeah. Amber, my <laughs> wife was like looking over my shoulder at our Zoom meeting earlier in the week, Rick. And she was literally like, I can't believe how like tan and handsome Rick is. And I was just sort of like, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Amber. I'll see you You're in like, August. believe it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Rhoda. Patricia K is so sick of doing dishes. Can you please give us a one pot or one dish meal? Yeah. Um, okay. So you have your soups, your stews, like all of those, we know about those, but I love to just sear a protein like skirt steak or pork tenderloin in a pan, deglaze with a little chicken broth, white wine, scrape up those brown bits, and then add some greens like kale or Swiss chard or spinach, you know, and then you have your veg and your protein and then you're set. 
My other favorite that my kids love is fried rice, which is a great way to use up whatever you have hanging around your fridge. As long as you have cooked rice, you can make fried rice. Amazing. Totally. Could not agree more. Um, all right, so this is a question for everybody um, from Emily Lacing. What was everyone's major in college? Uh, everyone can just like shout it out. Um, like, I guess, I don't know. It's gonna be Are we going out of there? Yeah, I don't know. What, what? Shouting out seems like pure chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby. Journalism. Che. Journalism. Whoa. All right, Claire. American studies. Molly. Art history. Priya. Government and French. I was a double major. All right. Rhoda. Fine art photography. Okay. Wow. Cool. Stola. Economics. Um, Carla. Modern culture and media. Ooh. Uh, Brad. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, Did college. Uh, college just really wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, valid choice. I that's agree. A meal. Uh, English, and I will say I was two credits short from a dance minor. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Delaney. I have a good old BFA in graphic design. Wow. wow. Andy. Cultural anthropology. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Rick. European history. All right. <laughs> um, I was a French major, bien sûr. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, Emily, Emily's <laughs> trying to figure out. What? <laughs> wait, 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 Chris. What were you, you just going to gloss over that? Yeah, I was a French. This is a man of mystery, I knew that. Man. Man. You speak fluent I just French. had to pick something. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> Why did we not know um, this? Emily's and how come to your croissants we... aren't better? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, well, hey, you don't have to make them to eat them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Emily's trying to figure out if she should go to pastry school or whatever. And so anyway, um, maybe, I don't know that we've like provided any clear answers here, but um, all right, so <laughs> listen. Um, right, oh, favorite albums to cook to or favorite drink to drink while cooking. I feel like those are two very different things, but maybe <laughs> this is obviously- Wine. Okay, uh, I'm gonna rattle these off. Drinks, we're gonna do three different categories. Wine, I like some rosé. Uh, beer, I like some Pilsner. Cocktail, I like a Lil Ripper or an Americano. Um, and then three albums to listen to while cooking. Uh, Led Zeppelin II by Led Zeppelin. Um, Jungle by Jungle. And We Are Family by the great Philadelphia disco outfit, Sister Sledge. Nice one. <laughs> All right, so guys, we are going right into the speed round. Um, this means like one word answers. So I guess we're just gonna kind of have to shout these out and hope it doesn't get too crazy. Um, yeah, good luck. So if you wanna, if you wanna <laughs> raise your hand, you can do that too. All right. First question: What breads can you make without yeast? Go. Tortilla. Tortilla. Communion wafer. Flatbread. <laughs> Flatbread. Zucchini bread. Flatbread. Pizza. pizza. <laughs> All right. Cornbread. Cornbread. <laughs> Who's you know that cornbread? Bread, 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 bread. Like Greek yogurt, flour, and uh, baking uh, powder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally, Brad. Um, <laughs> you got it, man. Um, so, like Hermione, Wonderful. Um, would love to hear typical grocery lists during this time. Um, I'll, mm. I'll, if anybody wants to answer that, um, you know, just just raise your hand. Wait, uh, repeat the question. So, <laughs> <laughs> which was speed round? <laughs> this is speed round. <laughs> just um, repeat it fast. Would love to hear your typical grocery list. All right, during this time of quarantine. Well, and it's speed. not short. <laughs> All right. Carla. Yeah, it's not short. I mean, I'm really, I have a lot of staples, so I don't need to refresh those all the time, but weekly, good bread, leafy greens, some kind of cabbage, cold brew, frozen blueberries. Gin, Wine. Bourbon. Wine rye. <laughs> um, <laughs> at least a case of wine. 
Uh, one tomorrow, a 12 pack of beer just to be safe, you know? All right. I've been going through a lot of all This is a great question. All right. This is from Latchy Monster 100. When should I season my eggs? Immediately. Yeah. Immediately? Immediately. It depends. It depends how you're cooking them. Scramble, yeah. oh. and anything else after. I like yeah. to add it halfway through scrambling. I don't know. Is that weird? Me too. Oh, me you too. wouldn't salt halfway. a fried. You wouldn't salt, salt a fried egg. Nobody's just doing don't that. Don't forget. I season it right away. Salt. I season no, my fried No, salt in the beginning of just scrambling. You're I do halfway, Chris. <laughs> 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 I think the answer That's is sweet for own. All right, cool. All right, listen, guys, this was fun, but, um, you know, not that anybody asked for it, but um, we're going to go check out a video of all of us chopping some onions, all right? <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, I was living her truly her best life right now. Yeah, I, it's it's impressive. It's amazing how much money we've already raised. One hundred and twenty-two thousand and two hundred dollars over that. I know, already. in a matter of like an hour and a half, it's ridiculous. Amazing, far beyond anything we expected. But I think we can do better. I hope we can do better because it's for a great cause. And I also think maybe to incentivize you guys to smash that donate button. We can dangle some Brad content in front of you <laughs> and tell you that if you donate right here, right now, there will be more Brad in the remainder of the show. That feels like what a more good do deal you want than more Brad. Literally That's all nothing. you ever need. No, it's all it's you ever trash. need. So please donate. Please support this cause. And in the meantime, we're going to watch some clips of Brad's greatest moments. Hey guys, today on It's Alive, we're up here in Alaska doing a little, uh, what the f*** they call them? <laughs> Who sings that? <laughs> Nelly Furtado. Is that like the swing and swing? No. Out on the bearded barley. <laughs> Who sings that one? I like that tune. It has a name. You know how I am with pron pron pronunciations. Say brioche. Brioche. Uh huh. Aren't you going to France soon? Yeah, we. Doop, doop, doop. Cha, 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 cha. So, 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 what did they say? Ka, aha, aina. Ka. All right, hold on. Let me get the card. Soft, salvi. Hey, Ben, how do you say the island? I'm here with Pauly Mastronarni. For the Paul. record, it's Paul. Paul, 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 Paul. Emerald Lagasse. This looks fun. Yeah, it's fing emerald. Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> That's not his name. Emerald. I said emerald. And then lastly, we're gonna be going over to <clears throat> Kaha Aina Cafe. <laughs> I couldn't speak. You say it. Brioche. But it's clear. That's what I'm saying. Brioche. Uh huh. Oh, Delaney. My arch nemesis. You like these things? Yeah. Delaney. Any Look respectable you. person likes an Andy's mint. Pure class. Dude, you're out of your mind. Violence is never the answer. Okay. New gonna... York peppermint patty. Pure class. Delaney. New York or just York? Delaney. Oh, yeah, um, that's what I said. York peppermint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Delaney. I was almost like. Oh, mango. There... Yes, but. That's an avocado bread. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I... Mango. I had, a, I had a stroke. What is that? Yeah, you got, well, you got, well, you have two guests now. Right? <laughs> you know, zoom in on that there, Vinny. Oh, yeah, this is a nice big boy. Oh, yeah, big boy. Yeah, there, big boy. Yeah, you big ugly son of a bitch. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh, good God. Hey, forget the chocolate. Look at that little guy. <laughs> <laughs> it could go, it could be, I could, you know, and then we can come. But you want to, when, at the end of the day, I'm kind of, you know, it looks like I'm going to have to get one, but I noticed you guys got these really cool little baskets. Um, you know, is there a reason you guys carry baskets, com you know, compared to like a little, I mean, other than it being super cute and all, um, <laughs> is there a, a beneficial to putting your mushrooms or whatever you're harvesting in there com yeah. uh, compared to like a plastic bag? A lot of people get concerned about botulism. Say an animal plant, Vinny, let's go. I, 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 I don't know, I, sometimes I just do it though. It's just, I, hey. it's just, just natural. Okay, let's go cook some fish, eh? Yeah, eh? Well, that makes no sense, Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, here you, brother. You know, Monday, brother, back on the grinding wheel. <laughs> oh, I hear you, brother. <laughs> Well, hello there. All right, since we killed it with the donations, guys, got my got my old guitar all tuned up, and I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite bands, The Merger.
Yes. Hey everyone, it's Priya and Chris. We are live from my dinner table. Uh, we are so excited to announce we have raised $132,800, which is insane. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris, I think it might be time for the banana stuff. Yes, yeah, so I don't know if anybody noticed. Um, I've had a banana duct taped to the front of my microwave um, all evening. And I said, if we broke 100,000, that these two would get a second banana. All right. Yes. Release yes. the second banana. Yes. yes. Woo. Get that peel off. All right. And it's brown and mushy just the way you guys like it. Yeah. All right. Oh my you God. It. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Yeah. And thank you all. All right. You've made two kids and frankly, a whole lot of other people very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Priya. They've been waiting literally two hours for this. Incredible. Incredible. Um, how much do you miss the test kitchen, Chris? Oh, my God. I, I miss the test kitchen so much. <laughs> Never more than at these moments. Um, but, um, yeah. Should we take a look at some of our favorite moments from the test kitchen? Let's do it. You can really, really do some damage with the mandolin. But like anything, it just takes a little bit of practice and common sense. Ow, mother Ow. Damn it. You could take care of that. Oh, oh my god. I think I need to make a mold, and it has to be a mold that I'm able to put into the fryer, so I have to make it from metal. What's the budget like for this series for you, destroying <laughs> different things in the kitchen, you know? Do we have funnels? Funnels? Yeah. I do. I won't destroy it. Okay. Can I, can I yes, hold on, can yes, I yes. hold on to it for a second? No, no, I destroy it, right? No, I promise, right? I promise. Okay. I also do kind of want to destroy it. I want to, I, this is, I need to destroy this. I need the sauce. I think that's it. Really? I mean, if you have to read the instructions, then it's too complicated. Totally. <laughs> Oh, God. oh, no. oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> We're not stuck. We need a test tube. Oh, yeah. Should we do a double tube? <gasps> I think that's such a great idea. <laughs> no, in James Bond, Q, like Q has all the technology. Yes. You, it's, need, a, you it's, need a Q. It's kind of Brad, but first of all, he's not here. And second of all, it's usually not that helpful. <laughs> that fell on my foot. You got food right there, man. I'm just saying. Oh god. Ah! Oh! I hate the noise that that makes. Oh. I mean, they look kind of wet, but like they're getting coated. Function as a drum for coating stuff. Sorry. <laughs> This is this has come up before in gourmet makes. I don't remember when. The idea of using a potato as a mold. I need something to plug the end of these straws. You gotta make a little squash plug or a potato plug. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, make a potato plug. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. What is happening right now? Bring in the foam. <laughs> I aspire for every single woman makes to feel like a seventh grade art project. Yay, look how good they look. I'm done. I think it's 5.45, this is what happens. I finish and then there's no one here. <gasps> is this an actual Girl Scouts badge? Should we write Troop Test Kitchen? <laughs> I can't believe I just did this. Oh, so that's what life is like up in Hudson, New York. Oh, Adam, hi, <laughs> how's it going? Good to I don't see mean you. to interrupt your, your evening sherry, Emil, mm -hmm. as, you, as you hang out by the fire. 
No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What's going on? Okay. So as we were concepting this show, uh, we asked everyone for ideas. You had far more ideas than anyone else. And while they were all great. What else is new, Adam? What else is new? <laughs> while they were all great, we didn't actually use any of your ideas. So for this segment, how about you read all of your ideas while, oh, one of them was that you would taste every condiment in your refrigerator. Yep. Yeah, that right. Exactly. Yeah. So for each, don't, don't, don't hide your pretty face. So for each condiment you taste, okay. you will read another idea. Are you ready to go? Okay. All right, that let's hit great. it. All right, Why let's don't do we this thing. Let's start with a little Mile Rich Country Mustard, my new favorite. It was the only thing that was left in the grocery store. Is that how you pronounce <laughs> it? Is it my, may, I'm not a, my... I'm not a French major, Adam. No. I have no idea. No, it was um, Chris Morocco the French it's major? It's delicious. Yeah. The French major. Ooh, spicy. Yeah. <clears throat> Dijon, okay. spicier than you think. So the first idea I had, it's a segment called Three Martini Lunch. Um, and it's just like two and a half hours of me and Che and uh, Alex Beggs having lunch with somebody on Zoom live uh, and drinking three entire martinis. You've literally been pitching the story for three years now at Fun Appetit. <laughs> okay, let's let's forget that idea. Okay, right, let's move one. on. Let's move on. Okay, we got a little Tabasco here. Mm. Like Tabasco, also <coughs> spicier than you think it is. Vit, wow. vit, vit, more vinegary than you think. Way more <coughs> straight to the back of the throat. Okay, All right. so this one you're gonna like this one. This segment's called Waxing Poetic, mm. and it is where you. Uh, read y- your first ever Bon Appetit editor's letter while eating an entire taper candle. Oh, I'm going to pass on that one, but but good idea. Well, but but if people, but but maybe it's the kind no, of thing where like, no, people no, don't next, need enough. Next, okay, 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 next. okay. Um, let's move on to. We got some soy paste here. Um, oh. just really goopy. I mean, get a little taste right off that. What do you like to use that with? Ah, it's for that scallion noodles recipe oh, yes. oh, that yes. we ran for a, a while ago, which yeah. I want to remake. Okay, um, this one, okay, this one, this segment is called Break Up to Shake Up. So what oh. we do is if somebody donates a certain amount of money, they get to select a test kitchen editor to break up with their significant other over Zoom live, and then a different test catch, kitchen editor will console their now heartbroken see i would have i, I would have greenlighted but, but, that, but, but hold that just, never just got check it me. out check it out just but the revenue is there because it that that person is also going to pay by the minute for for the consoling so if the person the bereft you know it's like okay if, i got if, you if anyways people go to the donate button down there let's hit 200k donate we now will for break up kitchen. with your boyfriend you. We'll all break up with each other. All right, next. What do we got? Give me. Okay, me okay, okay, okay. Uh, another. Okay. Uh, let's okay, just. We got three uh, more. Mio, we got three more. Let's do it. Oh, French. Okay. Old straight school. up a little French. No, 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 no. You got to go straight into the mouth. Emil, straight oh, into the oh, mouth. Oh, it's straight. It's straight. Got, but I got the goopy part. Straight into the mouth. Come on. Okay. I want you to shoot it like whipped cream. There you go. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, big turmeric energy. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's, that's where that good. color Whew. comes from. Okay, this one's called How to Conk Everything. So it's, uh, we uh, show our viewers how to incorporate heart healthy, high protein canned conk meat into everyday (laughs) dishes. And I think this is a really good place for like a sponsor integration. Just stop, stop. All right, next. Okay, fine, 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 fine. fine. Two more, what do we got? Okay, here is some um, off-brand sriracha that is maybe really old. Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> sriracha sriracha is interesting that is rancid that is a rancid condiment yeah. Say, all right okay okay um uh how many ideas do i have left one or two i don't know cory and cory the control do we have one or two ideas left <laughs> apparently it's a, it, you got a car okay, okay. this left. one this one's did called you just, this did one. you just drink all the sediment from your orange wine there there was no sediment <laughs> It's just was- sorry. It's just the it's just the, the condiments. Okay, this one's called Carla eats her words. So Carla 
is going to eat an entire copy of her best-selling cookbook, Where Cooking Begins, mm. live, page by page. And the, kind of the idea is people keep on donating money, and then she keeps on eating. So it's like, can you she, know, she gets a can, couple pages in. Can she borrow your tray of condiments to eat the pages with? No, 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 con no condiments, no condiments. It's just, oh, wow. I mean, she can, just she can chase it with some, like, skim milk or something, but that's it. Oh, <laughs> delicious. All right, all right, Emil, let me ask you a question. You're familiar with Carla's hit show, Back to Back Chef, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But are you familiar with Front to Back Chef? Hey guys, it's Carla, and I'm here tonight with my son, Cosmo. Hi. And uh, you guys have probably seen Back to Back. Tonight, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Tonight, it's all about my brains and his arms. This is <laughs> Front to Back Chef. <laughs> all right. And together, we, being one body now, are going to make a smashed cucumber salad. Hmm. <laughs> so thoughtful. All right. So the first thing I want to do is pick up my rolling pin and give these nice mini cucumbers a few good whacks on. No, well, we'll just leave them on the cutting board so you can get some good whackage. Watch your fingers. <laughs> Watch your fingies. <laughs> just go ahead and whack. Whack until they split. There you go. Okay, good. That one. Uh huh. That one's dead. Right? Two down. <laughs> Two down and one to go. All right, and one more. Good. And uh, once these are smashed and my fingers are not, we are going to um, just pick those up and get them in that bowl over there, nice and neat. <laughs> right into the bowl. Wonderful. <laughs> Excellent. So smooth. Uh huh. One right in the middle and move that on over. Good. And you split them in half as you go. So let's bring the um, bowl up onto the cutting board so I can see it better <laughs> and be splashed by it more efficiently. All right, so we're not gonna need the rolling pin anymore, but you do need to break those up into small pieces. And then the next most important thing that you could do with cucumber salad smashed thusly would be to season it right up. I have a, a plethora. Yep, we're just getting those split open. <laughs> One piece at a time. <laughs> um, yep, just split them open. Who needs knives? You know what I mean? Just rolling pin, a smash and bash. All right, kid, let's move on to seasonings. <laughs> okay, so I have here some sesame seeds, some sugar, some salt, and some peanuts. I feel like, um, let's season with salt. <laughs> yep. Nope, yep, nope. Oh, yeah, that's sugar. Oh, add a little sugar too, just a pinch. Um, just a pinch, yep, just a pinch. This show is called Just a Pinch. And the salt is there, okie dokie. Yep, a good old four finger pinch on the old salt. Yes, <laughs> put them right on there. Uh huh, and then, um, you know, the spoon's kind of in our way. Let's get the spoon out of there. I'm gonna take the spoon out. One of the best. <laughs> One of the best things you can um, toss is <laughs> put the salt down. I'm gonna put the salt. I'm gonna put the salt down. I'm going to. Okay. One of the best tools you have is your own hands. So just toss, toss them all around. Toss them and toss them and season them. Wonderful. All right. I would love something crunchy in my cute sap. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's go to this thing. Mmm. 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 Oh, pretty sweet. <laughs> Let's add some soy sauce, shall we? Mm, that's vinegar, but yeah, add that. <laughs> nice, nice vinegar. <laughs> yes. It, some of it got in the bowl and a little, a little soy sauce, would you? Okay. Yeah, because it was a little salty. I mean, it was a little sweet. Perfect. And then just tossy toss with the old handy hands. <laughs> toss, toss, toss. What? 
Sorry, my little name. bird. <laughs> vinegar in my name. <laughs> oh, vinegar in the old hands. Yep, sure does burn. All right. Um. Uh, let's see here, kid. Can you reach that mint? Nope, that's vinegar again. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the mint. Oh, and yes. And just tear those. Tear, <laughs> tear some leaves. One, oh, the aroma of the mint is so lovely. Ah. <laughs> and cooling at the same time. You know what we didn't add? We didn't add any MSG, and we were just talking about that earlier. What a all-purpose, wonderful seasoning it is. Oh, good. Pop the top on that guy. And a few shaky shakes of the magic crystals. Wonderful. <laughs> They're so beautiful. You know what we need? What? We need something crunchy. Can I add some peanuts, kid? <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Just a couple or all of them. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Toss again? We need to toss. And uh, hmm, let's see. Can I taste? I, I should taste it as I go. Yep. Give it up. Hmm. Not bad. Um, you know what? It needs a little ginger. Can you grab the ginger? Grab the ginger? The ginger. <laughs> oh, no, it's underneath the shit. Yep. Nope. That yeah, that's it. Okay, and um Grab your mic microplane. No kitchen is complete without a microplane. Right. Not the blade. That guy. <laughs> okay. We're going to finally shave some ginger. <laughs> yes. Finally shaving. And I smell it. I don't see it yet, however. Keep going. And I'm going to add... Oh, it smells so good. It actually smells great, guys. Smash cucumber salad, ginger. We've got peanuts. We've got MSG, salt, sugar and some mint. Um, you know, what? <laughs> oh, you know what? Grab a towel if your hands are bothered. Yes. No, no, we're no. the thing. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, just gonna dust off. All right, we are nearing completion here. What's missing? You didn't add any nori. Should we add some nori? What's nori? Seaweed, of course. Right there, in the little tray. There we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just crush them up. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. That's what it was missing. It was missing Nori. What? Oh, A -S -S -A. say ASMR. <laughs> ASMR. Okay. All right. I think one final toss, and we should give this a taste. On a count of three, <laughs> we're going to disengage. Okay. Perfect. All right. So now, on a count of three, we're going to look at our creation. Ready? Are you ready? Yes! <laughs> One, two, three. Whoa. Okay. Oh, oh my God. It looks it's so beautiful. nice. It's beautiful. Oh, it's got all of <laughs> It's got whole sprigs of mint. Not everybody does that. A lot of people, uh, you know, chop the mint. Who needs it? <laughs> I'm just gonna cut off a finger if I tried to chop. How do you think you did? Terribly. Terribly? No, you did fabulously. Mm. All right. Why is there seaweed? Why not? One taste? Sure. Okay. Mm. 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 It's pretty good, right? It's warm. It's warm. <laughs> it might have been from, um, you might have hot hands. Has anybody ever told you that before? Hot hands. Yeah, well, you got hot hands, but you are one cool customer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pull it down a little bit. Yes. Yeah. All right. No. So, a little toss. I think actually mm. this is excellent. If you could change anything, what would you change? No whole pieces of mint. No whole pieces of mint. Very easy adjustment to make. Well, I feel like every back-to-back -back should be like that. There's a lot of celebrities that I wouldn't mind if they would just, you know, wrap their arms around me and <laughs> really get into it together. So, <laughs> if you're out there, give me a call. Speaking of celebrities, as if Cosmo wasn't enough, we have a very special guest coming up right now.
Well, I'm really excited. What a treat this is. This is like su such a wonderful um, diversion from my normally very boring day to get to talk to you. So I'm, I'm so glad. Um, I I'm so happy to, to talk to you too. And, Thank you. And Thanks for your time. I'm totally happy to do it. And I don't think you have a boring day at all. So this oh. is great. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks. Everybody dreams um, of having your day. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's um, a lot of cooking, a lot of cooking. That's mm -hmm. sort of like the best way to pass the time, I found. So I'm wondering, what have you been cooking or baking in quarantine? So as soon as we all decided to, you know, to work at our homes, I just started cooking and I was working on new recipes. And then I started thinking, you know, people really need somewhere to go to say, well, if I don't have buttermilk, what should I do? And I'm not sure that I know the answers, but I thought at least I had a shot at it. I decided I was going to post a picture of my pantry on Instagram and, um, and just say, do you guys have any questions that you need answered or what are you making for your pantry? And I had no idea <laughs> what the response was going to be. It was crazy. And I just started answering the questions. And then it became like this town hall. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll just make something for my pantry every day and post it. It just became a really positive thing, both I think for people that were following it because they didn't know what to make, like with those white beans that they got, because they thought it was a good idea. But what do you right. make with white beans? Um, <laughs> right. And also, but also for me, it became a really um, positive thing for me. Has that felt like a new way of cooking for you? Because I'm sure you're so accustomed to recipe developing where you are like writing out an ingredient list and thinking about the dish before you start. And this is a little bit backwards where you're looking at what you have in the house and then kind of figuring exactly. out what to make. So has that been good for you? It's actually totally been fascinating because I never use my freezer. I had this, I always had this expression wow. that things go in the freezer, but they never come out. So, <laughs> I mean, I have vanilla ice cream. I have like um, vodka and chicken stock. That's it. I have nothing else in the freezer. And all of a sudden I realized I have to use the freezer because that's, you know, I have carrots that are going bad and maybe I'll make some soup. Like I always thought that if you had a frozen chicken, you put it in the refrigerator, you defrost it overnight, and you use it the next day. And all of a sudden I realized, it's not overnight, it's like three days. <laughs> right, it's still <laughs> like, frozen. It takes forever, it's like frozen <laughs> turkey from Thanksgiving. So I've learned so much from cooking this way, and it's totally gonna inform my next book. Oh, wow. I really, I admire like how sort of proactive you're being about work like you know the lead time on your books and looking down the line which is which is great so how have you been kind of keeping in contact with people and trying to maintain a little yeah. bit of sociability have you been doing zoom calls and facetime and that kind of thing well i just kind of dipped into it <laughs> last weekend some friends in wyoming and we decided let's do zoom cocktails and she had a really interesting idea she said she's done zoom cocktails with people but it wasn't a shared experience because they were all eating different things and drinking different things. She and I decided is that we, we would um, make the same thing. So it was like shared flavors and smells at the same time that we were sharing the experience. Right, so, right. So at least we could catch up with them and see what they're doing and how they're doing. And it was, it was a great experience. We'll certain, certainly do it many more times. So I saw you made that huge Cosmo on Instagram, which took the internet by storm. Oh my that god, was that was so incredible. Nice. <laughs> and I just think it'd be fun to do, do something fun. I'd seen these, we were cleaning out the basement in these huge cocktail glasses. And yeah. I thought, oh, I'm going to make a Cosmo in that. Oh my god. <laughs> and, People loved I, it. They went crazy. It was so funny. Have you been observing like a cocktail hour at home and making drinks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have the time now to just kind of have the cocktail hour. Any favorite cocktails? And do you and Jeffrey prefer different? drinks he tends to like a scotch and scotch on the rocks or scotch and soda i like that that cosmo which is it's just so good it's so simple and with fresh lime juice it's the best you have a cookbook coming out it sounds like you have another one another and one you do in the too and i do too yeah so <laughs> tell me a little bit about the new book so the new book um, is called <laughs> Modern Comfort Food. Could I have picked a better title for the moment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like crazy. I picked it because I thought going into the election would be stressed and it would be really great to have really good comfort food. But who knew this was going to happen? And right. now we need comfort food. So after so many books and so many seasons of the show, how do you find inspiration for recipes? But it, it doesn't sound like you have a problem with that. I mean, those are all like such wonderful inspired ideas. 
Thank you. Um, you know, I think after the first book, I thought, okay, that's all my recipes. I, you know, I had a specialty <laughs> food store and we're done and it was fun. <laughs> and fortunately, my publisher called and said, we need another book immediately. <laughs> and I was like, I'm out of recipes. <laughs> so at some point I thought, well, I used to also do catering. So maybe I would do the recipes that I did for catering uh, and call it Barefoot Contessa Parties, which is what the second book was. But then I'm like, out of recipes. In the third book, I said to Jeffrey, I'm kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here. I just don't know if, and then I, you know, I thought, well, things that families would like, you know, it's kind of like exercise, I guess. You, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Uh -huh. um, and now I literally sat down and wrote a list of like a hundred recipes I wanted to play around with for the next book after comfort food. So, wow. um, and I'm just ticking off that list. So mm -hmm. it's, I think, um, don't you feel that way after a while you just get better at like um, thinking of a good idea? I think so. I think that you sort of learn the places and sources of inspiration. And I also learn yeah. that like there might be a period like of, a, of writer's block, right? I just don't have any new ideas. And then there'll be a period of a couple of weeks where all of a sudden, you know, like a dozen or more ideas come to me or something like yeah. that. So I've learned to yeah. just trust the creative process that like sometimes you feel less creative, sometimes you feel more creative, but it'll or, always come back. <laughs> or there are weeks when nothing works and you're like, I right. just can't do this anymore. <laughs> so I want to write your book. Your book is called A Dessert Person, which is such a great name. Thanks, Dessert Person, yeah. I thought of it right away because when I was trying, I was sitting down to think about what kind of book I wanted to write. I was just thinking like, I'm a dessert person. That's that's the kind of book that I want to write. The name really stuck and, and I love it because it's really about, it's about the recipes, of course. It's about baking, but it's also about an attitude and an approach that it's okay to eat dessert. It's okay to love dessert. We should sort of like embrace food as pleasure. So that's the kind of ethos of the book. And it's a range of recipe levels. There's like the easiest recipes from like stir together muffins, banana bread to a croquembouche, you know, so. so oh, wow. Um, oh, that's great. So baker, bakers of every level. And I always hear that. Do you hear that a lot? Like, oh, I can cook, but I can't bake. Is, is something um, I think that people are afraid to bake and they don't realize it's a they know a few principles and they follow them starting with like you measure wet ingredients in a, in a, in a wet measuring cup and dry mm -hmm. ingredients in a dry measuring cup. If they know a few principles, they'll be fine. Right. So the book is a lot about that approach um, and sort of like knowing the rules and then when you can break them. So there is a chapter on savory baking because I want people to know that baking is oh, yeah. about cakes. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's breads and savory galettes and all those kinds of things. It's, it's trying to show people that it's more versatile than they maybe thought. I had a very dear friend and on a pump who owned loaves and fishes in Bridgehampton. She used to say, nobody remembers what you serve for dinner, but they always remember dessert. <laughs> I love that. I love Isn't that. that. So it's so great that you could join us for this fun YouTube live segment to benefit World Central Kitchen. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about it and any connection that you have to that organization. Well, I just am so, as everybody is, so completely knocked out by what Jose has done and how quickly he established himself in the middle of a hurricane it was incredible and then just didn't say okay that's it we're done just kept going because there really are people all over the world that need help and he's a genius I mean he's just incredible and his heart is so huge that he just goes in and does it he figures it out on the on the fly and um, right. so and anything to support them I'd be happy to do yeah really it's a great, a great organization and we're so happy to have you help us support thank it you. so um, thank you I guess concluding question is there a restaurant or a place that you are looking forward to going when the <laughs> social distancing measures have lifted a little bit and just, so, you know. It's so funny. Jeffrey and I just, just last night said, okay, what are we going to do the minute it's over? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, we're taking the first plane to Paris <laughs> and we're going to go to some fabulous place there and not fancy, but something just like really earthy. And maybe we'll take a train to the south of France. And, yeah, and, and that's the way that kind to do of gives a little light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> right, right. I love that. I love that. What are you going to do? Lovely. Ooh, um, maybe go out for dim sum. I like really miss the kind of places in the city that I go to yeah. all the time. Um, like go to my favorite coffee shop, just go to like all my regular spots that I can't go to anymore. Yeah. You know, in the meantime, it's such a treat to get to talk to you. Well, it's so great to talk to you. In, but this is great, so. Um, Maybe when this is over, we can see each other in person. <laughs> I would love that. I would love I would that love we should drink a, a huge Cosmo. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> fine. So, okay, You're all right, well, clear. thank you so much. It was such thank a pleasure. You. It was really a pleasure. 
All right. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, Ina. And thank all of you for watching tonight. We're almost at $150,000. Let's get up to one seventy-five. dollars Anyone who's given, if you could just give the same amount you've already given it. So if you've given $5 or $10, hit that donate button again. Let's get to one seventy-five for Jose Andres and World Central Kitchen. We're almost there. And you can keep watching this show. You can send the link around. It will live on on YouTube. The donate button will work. So let's get up to 175 at least. I think we can do it. I'm counting on you. You guys can do it. And thank you to our sponsors, Bush's Beans and Dawn Power Wash. Thank you guys. You made this show happen. We could not have done it without you. And let's bring on the entire team of all the BHS Kitchen editors who've done such an amazing job tonight. We got him out here. Can we get him out here? Do we have the technology? Oh, and thank you guys in the control room who have been amazing tonight, who've been telling us what to do and talking in our ears because, like, we don't know what the hell we're doing. It's the first time we've done this tonight. We're live. Somehow we got through this. Brad, I like the sunglasses. Very chic, brother. Everybody, are we there yet? <laughs> we're getting one by one. Oh, there's Carla. What are you drinking, Carla? A little uh, Grenache. Ooh, Grenache. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking my beer on ice. I'm just going to keep pouring. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> mm. it's wine time now all right guys cheers thank you so oh wait wait we got a few cheers. more oh there's rick and mazelon he's coming out oh they're coming in go. claire and gabby and everybody boz she's got her ninth negroni going out in the desert <laughs> hey, hey hydrated baz all right thank everyone's you. in guys let's raise a glass thank you amazing job great job raising so much. We are at 150 officially. Yeah. Awesome job. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We love you. We're we love you. Thank you for turning out. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, World Central Thank Kitchen. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Claire did it perfectly, but the um, oh. see how the wire is passing through the spiral. If you could take that piece out. Oh, that's not good. Is, yeah, that's not good. Oh. Is mine good? Uh, yep, Carla has it. And I feel then like I nailed it, it over here. You slide I it. Nailed it. You slide <laughs> it up to the thicker part of the microphone so it'll cinch down. So slide the oh, wire through. Oh, it's way. Wait, hold on. It's way. Slide the wire through. Oh, I got it. So, um, exactly. so how do we how do we record sound? Because I think we all got this part. <laughs> like, how do we just record the sound for the video? Brad, cut Brad. the blue wire. No, 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 no. Let's take Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about fucking microphones. Oh my god, calm down.